Hey everyone, welcome to another digital making at home video. Uh, following on for our theme of video games, I thought I'd add another ingredient to your toolkit today by helping you build a game over screen. Now, lots of modern video games don't really have game over screens as they tend to not have limited credits, but the simple games that we build on scratch very often do have that sort of end state or state change where the game has to just finish, like the game is suddenly over because you've run out of lives or whatever it is. Now, I'm going to be adding to the archery project that you might have seen me make with my partner in crime, Xavier, previously. If you haven't watched that video, you can go away to rpf.io slash home and watch it now. Uh, or you can carry on watching this video, that's totally fine. The principle will still work in your video games. It's just when I go to add it to my video game at the end and implement it, uh, it won't be as relevant to you. But that's totally fine because you can watch these videos in any order. Go away and add the bits as you come to them. So a game over screen <clears throat> is really, really useful because what we can do with it is we have our game playing and when in this instance the timer runs out which is when I want my end state to happen uh, the game will shift over into the game over phase and tell everybody that there's no more playing okay the controls are taken away from the player a big thing pops up on screen usually a big sign saying game over or the screen completely changes and locks you out so in my instance I'm gonna add a sprite that says game over so just like I added my coin screen sprite the other day uh, I'm going to add a new sprite so I hover over this and choose upload sprite and then in my game elements folder, I've got a couple here that I'd like to use. So I might use my big green one today. Uh, so I import that here and see my game over sprite pops up in my workspace here. So what I do with it next is I'm going to center it in the screen and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So it could go for, let's say, that. Fantastic. Okay. So that's a nice size. It fills up the screen. It's very obvious to the player that the game over sign has popped up. Now what we need to do now is we need to add a bit of code to make that happen. So if you've seen the video previously, you remember that I put most of my game controls inside the backdrop because that's way easy to get to them. So here's my timer that stops the entire game. And you can see at the end I've got my stop all block <coughs> to stop the game. What I want to do now is I don't want this to be my end state anymore. I don't just want it to kill my game. So I want to get rid of stop all. I still like this, when my timer runs out, so it starts at 15, when my timer gets to zero a second at a time, I play my sound bonk, uh, and then the game is over. And so what I want to do now is, as we worked with broadcasts previously, what I'm going to do here is, once my timer runs out, I'm going to have it broadcast a new message for me. So I'm going to take my broadcast block here, okay, well I've just broadcast coin into my game, so it started again, but that's okay, I'll just let it hover. So broadcast coin in, I want a new message, and this new message is going to be game over, okay? So I have my uh, game over broadcast here ready to go. And then here on my game over sprite, I want it to appear when it receives that message. So when I receive, I'll just make my blocks a little bit bigger for you so it's easy to see. So when I receive game over, what I want this sprite to do is to show, I want it to appear on my screen, okay, and then what I want it to do is I want it to stop everything, okay, so it should appear and just kill my game off, okay, so stop all scripts in my game, all right, so just when you double click it here, it runs that script, and so that's stopped all that, you can see my game stopped playing. So, what I'm going to have a problem with is when my game starts, my game over screen will always be visible. Okay, I want to get rid of it as soon as my game starts. And we all know that green flag is our universal kickoff. So that's our universal trigger for everything. So when my green flag is clicked, what do I want this thing to do? I simply want it to hide. Okay, so when I click my green flag, this should disappear. My coin screen should pop up. Fantastic, I can press any key to start. My game starts, it starts moving, I fire my arrows, you see my time. There we go, and it killed it, but it stopped my sound a little early, I didn't like that. I wanted to play my bonk sound, but it didn't quite do it, it killed it off. So let's go back here, start sound bonk, broadcast game over. Okay, so here's the difference between start sound and play sound until done. So start sound kicks it off and then broadcasts instantly and you see it was so fast that it killed the sound bonk and it's only this long. That's it, but it still stopped it before because what happened was it started that sound, immediately broadcast my message straight away, my game over sprite received that message, it showed and stopped everything in the space that it took that sound to even half play, it killed everything. So if I go back to my timer here and I've got my play sound until done, it will make sure my sound gets completely played and then it will kill my game. So 
for ease, let's just slow this down a little bit. We'll go to three for our testing phase. I push any key to enter my game. Three, two, one. Game over. Fantastic, and that's killed it. So <clears throat> from there, I've got my game over. You see it's killed everything. I don't have to have it kill everything, right? I could do a whole bunch of things. I could have it wait a certain amount of time before it broadcast coin in and start it again. Um, I could build another loop where it did something else. There's lots of things you can do from here, but in this instance, this simple game, we're just gonna kill it off once we have game over. And you can start it again by pushing the green flag. So you see my cap comes up, any key to start. And then it goes and kills it all off. Fantastic. So that's how to make a game over screen in Scratch, everybody. Um, show us what you've made. Send your projects into us. We'd love to see what you're doing. Uh, rpf.io slash home. Remember, if you're under 13, get your folks permission before you send us anything. But honestly, we'd love to see what your projects are, the things that you're coming up with. Like I said before, just because we aren't all together doesn't mean we can't keep creating cool stuff. So please share your work with us, guys. Get in touch. Have a go at all the stuff we've got on the project site. Keep learning. Catch you later.